Hello everyone, welcome to Research Hub. So far, the models we have done in our Smart PLS, PLSM application, they were reflective constructs. But now I'm going to show you how to do formative constructs modeling. So for formative construct, the main difference is going to be that the way the constructs are formatted is a little bit different. It's mainly from the application perspective in the software, the arrows are going to be from the observed variable to the latent variables instead of from the latent variable to the observed variable. So the way we have it now are, they are reflective constructs, but now we are going to change it like this, okay? And one of the main difference between reflective and formative construct is that in reflective constructs, these items, they are going to be highly correlated. So that's what we are expecting, that the items are highly correlated and they measure a latent construct. But on the other hand, in formative construct, it's the opposite. Okay, so here we are not going to expect high correlation among the items. Okay, but they are theoretically measuring a particular latent variable. So I have another dedicated video where I explain the concept of formative and reflective construct with very simple and clear example. But here I'm not going to discuss more detail about the concept of formative and reflective constructs. I'm assuming that you already know about them. Okay. So now we are going to do the modeling. And here the latent variables that I have Actually, they are more or less all of them are actually reflective constructs for just for the sake of illustration, I'm going to model one of them as a formative construct. But first I'm going to remove this moderating variables that I created in another video. And I'm also going to remove this bus terminal. So we don't really need those things. We can move with the main model that we have been discussing so far. So let's say I'm going to model this environmental performance as a formative construct. And that's really easy. I'm just going to right click here. Okay. And then I'm going to say switch between formative reflective. So I click this one. Now you see it has changed the arrow, right? So the direction of the arrow. Now it's from the observed variable to the, from the observed to the latent variable. Okay. And for my reference, I can also change the color of it so that I know that this is a construct that I'm modeling as a formative construct. So to that, do that, I'm going to click here on our on my color palette. And let's say I'm going to click blue and assign to, let's say, border. Okay, that's it. So I know this is my formative construct and all other constructs are reflective construct. So. As I mentioned earlier, one of the difference from reflective modeling to formative modeling is that the arrow goes from the observed variable to the latent variable. And another different is that the way we assess the model, okay? The way we assess the measurement model. So for reflective construct, normally we look into the reliability statistics, validity statistics, right? The Kronbach alpha, the composite reliability, the AVE, Okay, and uh, we look for the divergent validity and uh, using the HTMT and the foreigner lurker criterion, right? But for formative constructs, we don't really look into all those things. Okay, so for only for this construct now, we look into mainly two things. They are, one is the p-value, okay? P-value of the, all these observed variables, how they affect the latent variable. So that's what we are going to look into and we're expecting a significant p-value there, okay? If the p-value is not significant at 5% or statistical significance, normally we should drop that. And another thing we are going to look into is the VIF, okay? The variance inflation factor. We are not expecting high correlation among the items here. But in this case, in this particular example, it might be different because the data is not really formative, okay? But we are going to look into it so in a real formative, we would expect very not a very high correlation among the items of the formative construct. Okay, so the VIF tells us if 
uh, there is very high correlation among the uh, items and then we should maybe remove one or two of them okay so now let's just go on and see how it works so now we are going to click here on calculate I'm going with PLS algorithm you can also go with PLS consistent but I'm just going with PLS algorithm right and we are going to do a measurement model now so we are going here for factors okay and rest of the things yeah should be okay and if I start calculation our model was estimated so these are the reflective construct all of them we see the factor loadings they are well above 0 0.708 so it looks good right and if I want to see for example the VIF I can come here in the report and then I go in collinear diagnostics okay and then I scroll down here so for example here if CS1 to those have high correlation that's okay I mean for VIF the very conservative threshold is five right and a little bit liberal uh, so five it is a little bit higher than five so very conservative threshold is that it should be less than five but a bit liberal one would be less than 10 so up to 10 is still okay okay so here we see that for CS it's uh, five but for CS it doesn't even matter because they are reflective construct now we move here and we come here on EP so for EP we see that one of them is seven so if we are being liberal then we can leave it off but if we are being conservative then maybe we should drop the EP2 okay so maybe that's uh, one of them we should drop so now I'm actually proceeding without deleting any of them just to see how it works okay so so now let's move to the next approach and we are going to look into the uh, statistical significance of our uh, formative constructs now to see the statistical significance we actually have to run a path model right so I'm going to close the VIF here and then I'm going here and we go to bootstrapping here as I mentioned earlier I am keeping here 1000 but normally I would recommend about 3000 uh, to 5000 okay but here the more bootstrap sample I will do it will take us take me more time so I'm just keeping it 1000 for demonstration purpose and in the PLS here we are going to call path and then we go for a start calculation okay so now actually we will be able to see all the path associations but also we will be able to see the path associations of our formative construct so I go to report and I go here on outer weights okay and then here we see uh, bus driver to BD1 so from all the latent variables to the latent construct so that's great for reflective con constructs that's great because from there we can establish convergent validity but for the ref uh, for the formative construct here we are EP1 to the environment performance so the observed to the latent variable right and here you see actually from the formative construct modeling perspective we should actually drop EP1 and EP2 uh, that their p values are much uh, higher than 0 0.05 right uh, here this one is also exceeding the threshold of 0 0.05 but it's at least within if we are being a li little bit liberal it's at least within 10% uh, statistical significance so that's okay so if we really want to model environment of performance as a formative construct we should actually remove EP1 and EP2 uh, normally I'm going to remove first the EP2 okay because it also had the high variance inflation factor so I'm going to remove this one then I'm going to run it again and quickly see if our results are better now if I go here report I go to outer weights and here I see yeah I should also remove EP1 actually yeah so I should also remove EP1 okay go for bootstrapping so I run it again And here in the report we go to outer weights now if we look here it looks great and then we can also quickly run the PLS algorithm and see our VIF okay so we ran that 
and we go here and we go to VIF. And here we see that we don't really have that uh, variance inflation factor multicollinearity problem anymore. So now we can actually proceed with this model. And here, one of the thing is that, you know, normally I would recommend to have at least three items for any latent variables, but sometimes it may happen that you can, you have only two that fit, so that should be okay. But normally three or more is highly recommended. So now you know how to really assess a, how to really design and assess a formative construct. And for the reflective construct, the assessment will be same as what we have shown in previous videos. Thank you for watching. I hope you find it useful. In the upcoming videos, I'm going to show you how to do a second order modeling in a smart PLS. Thank you.